Hey guys, my name is Anthony Fontana. I'm a CPA with EA Tax Resolutions. And today I'm going over how to fill out the IRS Form 433A OIC for an IRS offering compromise. The IRS Form 433A OIC is the form that we need to fill out to submit an offering compromise with the IRS to settle our back taxes. Now I'm gonna be going over line by line throughout the whole form and I'm going to give you guys some pro tips on some of the lines where we can deviate from the instructions and potentially get you a better outcome with your offer. If at any point you think this form is way too overwhelming and you'd like to hire a professional, well, good news is I'm here to help. You can use a link in the description below to schedule an appointment with me to go over your particular case. All right, here's the... 2021 433A OIC here. Uh, we're gonna again go through this line by line. So let's get started here. Section one. Uh, this one's pretty straightforward. Obviously, you can put your name, uh, date of birth, social, your marital status as of the date that you're gonna file this offer and you're gonna put that date of the marriage here as well. What's your home address? Do we own the home or do we rent? You know, if other, right? Here's some examples. Live with a relative, you share the rent. You would fill that out. The county of your residence, your phone number, put that in there. Fax if you have one. And the mailing address if it's different from the physical address. If you're married, you're gonna put your spouse's information in right here. And then uh, you're gonna provide all the information of anyone in the household or you claim as a dependent right here. So you just put their name, age, relationship. If you put them on the 1040 on your tax return, you're gonna uh, check yes or no. And if they contribute to the income of the household. Again, check yes or no. Pretty straightforward there. Section two, employment information for wage earners. So if you're getting a paycheck with taxes being taken out of this and a W-2 at the end of the year, you have to fill this out, okay? Employer's name, pay period, so like how often are you paid? What's your employer's address? You gotta fill all this out here. Do you have ownership interest in this business, right? Are you an owner or are you just an employee? If yes, check the business interest that applies, right? Just put that here. Um, and if you are do have ownership in this and we're either a partner um, or an officer, you're gonna have to fill out that form 433B in addition to this 433A. Put your occupation, how long you work there, and the same goes for your spouse, okay? Section three, personal assets, okay? Up top here kind of gives us a rundown of what we have to be listing here, okay? But I'm gonna go over that. And again, we don't have to put any change. We're gonna round everything to the nearest dollars. No negatives, we just put a zero if it's negative, okay? Um, so we start with like a checking or savings account. We're gonna throw those in here. Also the money market account, an online account, store value card, anything here, right? We just could check that box put the bank name and the account number there with the balance as of the date that we file this offer. Now, you'll see there's only two sections for like a checking or savings account here. If you have more, which a lot of people do, you would just attach a, a statement with the same information here, bank name, account number, and then the balance, and attach that to the 433. And then you would put the total here on this 1C, okay? Uh, for this line one here, you would do whatever's on line 1C minus $1,000, and that's what goes right there. That one's pretty easy to do. Next one gets a little more complicated. Um, we have investment accounts, so if like we have a brokerage account like TD Ameritrade, Robinhood, E-Trade, any one of those numbers, right? We're gonna put that information here, account number, what's the current market value when you file the offer, and then right here you'll see that 0.8, so you're gonna do whatever the current market value is times by 80%, put that right here, and then you're gonna minus if you have any loans outstanding here with the brokerage. So the balance then goes right here. And then, you know, the same goes if you have a couple here. If there's more than two, same thing. We're just gonna uh, uh, include an attachment with uh, with this information on, um, you could just do this on like a Word document. Uh, but again, it just has to have this information on there. Virtual currency is kind of the same thing, right? If you have any virtual currency, what is the type? Uh, and the name of the exchange that you're using, right? Like the popular ones, Coinbase, I know that. Uh, the email address that you used um, to set up the exchange with, 
and the location of the virtual currency. What's the current market value when you file the offer times 80% and that's what you're gonna throw in here. Again, and that's what this is saying down here is uh, if you have more than one account, then you would just include that in an attachment um, with all this information here. And you're just gonna total all this up from all either your brokerage accounts with stocks and bonds and or your virtual currency and add that total amount right here to 2D. Um, well, sorry, it's gonna be the total amount times 80%. And that's what's going to go uh, go in here in 2D, as well as line two. Okay. Um, so sorry. This is going to be from the attachment. So the total from the attachments goes on 2D. Um, on line two is the total from all the brokerage accounts plus the attachments and the virtual currency times 80%. That is what goes here on line two. Then we have retirement accounts and you're gonna check the box here, 401k, IRA, or if you have like a 403b, um, you're gonna check that here, name of the institution, the account number, the market value, times 80% minus a loan balance, it's kinda the same thing here, right? And you're gonna put that total right here. If you have a couple, you're going to, again, add an attachment, put that total right here. Now you'll see here, note, your reduction from current market value may be greater than 20%. That's what this 8.8 uh, .8 is, that 20% reduction due to potential tax consequences um, and withdrawal penalties. So like if you withdraw out of a retirement account early and you don't qualify for one of the exceptions, then generally you're gonna get hit with a 10% penalty with the IRS and let's say you're here in California, you also get hit with a 2.5% penalty from California. So that's 12.5% before we include any taxes. So the taxes obviously depend on your tax bracket. Uh, but let's say for instance, you're, you're in like the 22% tax bracket with the feds and like a 10% tax bracket with the state. So we got 22 plus 10, we're at 32 plus the 12 and a half, 32 and 12 is 44 and a half percent. So that would be a lot more, right? The 44% reduction instead of the 20%. So that's what we would do here. And we would, um, we would put that total right here. So let's say for instance, right, we have a, a hundred thousand in our uh, retirement accounts and times it by right, let's say 60%, let's say it's round off or 40% is what our tax consequences and penalties are, right? We're gonna put that 60,000 right here. Now I'm gonna put that 100,000 right here, that 100,000, I'm gonna fill that out, put the 80%, 80,000, I don't have any loans, I'm gonna put the 80,000 there. But then when I fill out line three, I'm gonna put 60,000. I'm gonna include a statement on this stating that, hey, this is my tax bracket. These are the penalties I'm gonna be liable for. This is what I can use for the offer. So uh, you would have to explain that because uh, the IRS is, when, when they see that, they're gonna say, well, the math is off. Um, we're gonna reject that. Okay, so that's, that's definitely a pro tip right here for the retirement accounts is make sure that you calculate the potential tax consequences for pulling out of our retirement account and get that accurate here if it's definitely more than 20%, which usually it is. All right, moving forward here, cash value of life insurance policy. So if you have like a whole life insurance policy, usually they have that cash value. Um, just put the information in here, uh, minus a loan balance if there is any loan balance and that's what you're gonna put in for A and B. Again, if there's more than two, you would add an attachment and then total that up on four here. All right, moving on to section three here, personal assets information continued. So here we got the real property. So this is like your house, if you got one. Um, enter information on a house, condo, co-op, timeshare that you own or buying, including any assets owned by your spouse if you live in a community property state. So if we live in a community property state like California here, it gets a little tricky um, if we're not including our spouse in the offer and maybe the asset is a community property um, or if it's not, maybe it was acquired before the marriage. So I will have a video on that in a later date because that does complicate things a bit. But anyways, 
if we are filing with our spouse or we're just filing as single here, uh, this is how we do it. Is a real estate property for sale or you anticipate selling? This is pretty straightforward. Um, description of property, right? Is this their personal residence or rental? Or is this vacant? Purchase date, amount of the mortgage, if we have one. Uh, date of the final payment, how long do we have left? How is the title held? Is it joint tenancy, uh, community property, etc. Location, right? We need the address of the property, the lender, the contract holder, name, address, zip, phone number, you would fill that out. So current market value of the house. So you can be like, well, I'm not exactly sure what the current market value is. Uh, what I would do is I would go on either Redfin or Zillow and get the estimate there. I would print that out and use that with the offer here. I'm going to put that number in right here. 80%, you'll see that's a theme here. So whatever the current market value is times 80% minus the loan balance, so the mortgage that you have on the property and you're gonna enter in the balance there. You know, if you got obviously multiple properties, you'll have to do that a couple times here. If there's more than two, again, attachment with all this information on there. And then you're just gonna add these up, put it here on line five. Okay, uh, vehicles, uh, information, about, information about cars, boats, etc. that you own or lease. So make and model, year, date, purchase, mileage, uh, lease or loan, name of creditor. So if you own this outright, obviously you're not gonna click either of those. Name of the creditor, you, uh, you put that in there if you are leasing or have a loan on or financing this car. Uh, date of final payment, how much you pay monthly, current market value. So to get the current market value, we go on Kelly Blue Book, we see your car, we print that out, we include this with the offer, and we put that amount right here, times it by 80%, whatever the loan balance is left here, we're gonna throw that in right here. It's pretty straightforward. If you own the car outright, you're just gonna put the current market value times 80%, and that's what is the difference here. Um, okay. If the, if the car is leased, obviously you don't own the car, you can't sell it, so you're gonna put a zero, big fat zero right there, okay? do that for all the cars you own here is ah we're gonna go over that in a second actually sorry about that um so you would add if you have more than two cars again attach a statement with all this information here uh whatever you have totaled here you're gonna minus 3450 from it and put that amount here okay if you're filing this offer with your spouse you can get 3400 for each uh, of the car, for two cars, sorry. If it's just yourself, you only get 3450, um, just once, obviously, okay? And let's see here, there's the attachments down here, okay? I'm gonna add all those up, put it on line six. Section three, other valuable items, artworks, collections, jewelry, etc. here, okay? Kind of the same stuff, man. This is all that 80% minus the loan balance. You can put the total over here. Okay, and then you do it, obviously, if you got more, you just do an attachment. Same thing, add that up, put it here. Box A is an important one. This is towards the offer, okay? So you're gonna add lines one through seven. So you go all these bolded ones, seven, six, here we go, five, four, three, two, and one. And you're gonna put that down here, box A. Available individual equity in assets. So if you, fill this out get to box a and that box a right here this total amount is more than what you owe the irs you can stop doing this you're not going to qualify for an offer because the irs is going to say liquidate the assets pay us off okay now there are some caveats and some special circumstances where we have more in assets than what we owe but we would still qualify for an offer but that's a video for a later date um, and it really just depends on your circumstance okay section four this is for self-employed so for filing right you'll see that schedule C E or F on the tax return we would complete this here okay is it a sole proprietor uh, sorry sole proprietorship the name of the business the phone number what's the EIN the address of the business if you got a website you throw it in there I mean the more you kind of put here the better it looks 
um, because then the iris is going to do their research on their end um, so long that we are not hiding anything it's going to look better to the examiner when they go in and actually take a look at all this so the more we can put here the better okay description of the business like what exactly do we do the number of employees frequency of tax deposits like are we uh, sending in like quarterly payments for payroll if you have payroll average uh, gross monthly payroll again if you're running payroll trade name or DBA um, is this an LLC sorry this is uh, do you or your spouse have any any other business interests okay so this would be in addition to that other one yes you know and what exactly is it okay business name same stuff here type of business and you would throw that in there okay pretty straightforward there business asset information so list business assets such as bank accounts virtual currency tools books machinery equipment vehicles property kind of the same thing you did for your personal you're gonna have to do the same exact thing for the business okay this is all the same same exact stuff as what was that section two above sorry section three here so all this is going to be the same for the business here and you're gonna to have to put all that in addition to the personal you would have to put like tools books machinery equipment that are in the in the business too so like eventually you would have to provide also a list of your assets and itemize those for how much those are worth the iris will ask for those eventually okay you don't exactly have to use it when you file the offer it will look better though so if we can do that um, that will be better when the examiner gets your offer so nonetheless fill this out kind of again the same thing that we went over prior so if you missed that you can kind of go back and and, and and listen to that here uh, let's see are we missing anything out right here's checking our savings virtual currency right if we have any this is kind of just open-ended description of asset right whatever it may be 80 percent list of total value assets you're going to add all those up together irs allowed deduction for professional books trade uh, and tools of trade so let's see here if these assets are what we call income producing assets like if you didn't have this equipment you're not going to be able to continue your business then i would actually write that here on on the uh on the 433 i would list the actual asset here like um machinery right i'll put the current market value 80 percent if i have a loan but then right here on 9a i would put income producing asset like i wouldn't put the value because let's say i make t-shirts and i sell t-shirts and i I have my machine that makes the t-shirts now it's got a big value to it maybe it's worth twenty thousand dollars and and if but if i sell the machine i'm no longer going to be able to make any money for my business so that's why the iris kind of has this little caveat here where that twenty thousand dollars wouldn't be included towards the offer because it's an income producing asset so moving forward i would no longer have a business if i sold the machinery Okay, so that's what I, that would be a pro tip for sure. The the form does not tell you about that. So keep in mind if any of your equipment, supplies, machinery, tools are income producing for the business, that's exactly what you have to do. Now you want to list those here, but you just want to say these are income producing assets. Okay, and so obviously those would be a zero here. Okay, total those up, put those on line eleven here. All right. Um, notes receivable or notes account, uh, accounts receivable those are you know if if you're on an accrual basis of accounting and you have uh, notes receivable where people owe you money accounts receivable is kind of the same thing people owe you money like you've you've done a service and people owe you you would have to say you know yes or no and if yes attach the list of names that people owe you and how much they owe you kind of the same thing here okay all right obviously you don't ha you don't have the money so you can't put that over here but the irs will consider this so understand that one okay box b you're gonna add lines 8 through 11 throw that in right here section six this is if we have a 
right self-employment. This is for sole proprietors. You would fill this out. Um, if you provide a current, <clears throat> excuse me, if you provide a current P&L statement uh, for the information below, enter the grossly monthly income on 17 and your monthly expenses on line 29. So if you have a P&L, you don't actually have to fill all these lines out. And that's what I would recommend if you're doing this. And you just have the monthly income here, line 17. And then I would just total the monthly expenses and throw that in here and then attach the P&L with the 433 when you send that in. All right, there's that. Let's see, I, I think right here it says, you may use the amounts claimed for income and expenses on your most recent Schedule C. So on your most recent tax return, you can use those. Um, however, if it's changed significantly in the past years, you wanna use a current P&L, okay? And then, so 17 minus 29, you'll put that net right here, box C. Monthly household income and expenses. So if you're a wage earner, you're gonna put the wages right in here, right? If you have Social Security, you're gonna just total all those up for you and your spouse. Pretty straightforward there. Additional sources of income, right? You would put that in right here. Interest, dividends, distributions, net rental income. If you have rentals and they're producing income, you're gonna put that there. Uh, net business income from box C, that's from above here, right? You throw that in there. Child support received, alimony received. Um, this right here, additional sources. So like if you have an S corp, uh, you would throw that in there. Um, or if you'll see up here, they got a whole host of other income. Look at that. They even say Uber, Lyft. Wow, in there. And Airbnb. Uh, this is the new form for 2021. I have not seen that before. Uh, the information below is for yourself, right? Entire household. There it is. Okay, so all your income. Gross, again, gross, this is not net. This is before taxes and all those deductions that you get out of your paycheck. So you would put your gross wages in right here because you'll see below, this is where we get to deduct the expenses, okay? Um, all right, so monthly household expenses. This is probably the most important thing on this video is taking this away, making sure that we're filling this out properly. This is the number one reason why most offers get rejected. I have a video that it is titled just that, why offers most offers get rejected. And I'll include a link in the description that goes into detail how to fill this out a little better. Um, but you'll see there's a lot of like these standards here, okay? The standards are coming straight from this website right here. So be careful when you look at the website, it's based on either where you live and how many people are in your household. So make sure you take a look at that. But you'll see, depending upon you know which category we have, this is what the IRS is using. And like, you know, for this, we're using the lesser of actual or the standard. So like housing and utilities, just for instance, you would use either the less of what you actually pay in rent and utilities on a monthly basis or the standard. So like if you pay more than the standard, you would just use the standard. Um, vice versa right here, right? Out-of-pocket healthcare costs. So the IRS has a standard for you. If you pay more than that standard, you use the more. Now, you will need to justify this via the bank statements. So you can't just put a number here. And if it's not reflected on the bank statements, the IRS will reject it. But nonetheless, check out my other video, why most offers get rejected. And it goes into this section in detail, okay? You have your household monthly income minus the allowable expenses, right? All of this here together equals the remaining monthly income, okay? Now you're gonna use that box F and depending upon if we're going to be taking what we call the lump sum offer, which would be this one here, or the periodic payment offer, we would throw it in here. You'll see there's a multiple. So how does this work? Let's say you have $1,000 of income and you have $900 of expenses, right? We have $100 left of income here. We're gonna throw $100 here times 12, right? 100 times, whoops, times 12. We'd have $1,200 that would go right here. Or if we wanna do the periodic payment, we do the $100 times 24, right? 24, double, double the amount, we throw that here. 
Now you, the, I guess the next logical question is why would we use the periodic payment, the 12 multiple versus, or sorry, the 24 multiple versus the lump sum 12 multiple. Um, I will go over that in a separate video. We can really plan this out on which one we wanna use, but nonetheless, normally I'd say seven times out of 10, we're taking the lump sum because it is less. So we'll do that remaining monthly income box F, throw that right here, times 12, put that right there, G, and then that G goes right here, okay? And then you're gonna enter the amount from box A plus B if applicable. So um, box B was your business assets and box A is the personal assets. Add those two together, that is your offer amount, okay? So the next thing we would have to do after this is fill out the 656 with that offer amount. That will be in a following video. Section nine, additional information that needs to be considered uh, to consider settlement of your tax debt. If your business are currently in bankruptcy proceeding, you are not eligible to apply for an offer. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, so you have to fill out all these different questions, right? Are you or your party involved in the litigation, right? You would have to fill out what exactly is that litigation. Put the docket case number right there. Have you filed for bankruptcy in the past seven years? If yes, right, throw that in there. In the past 10 years, have you lived outside the US for six months or longer? Are you or have you ever been a party of any litigation involving the, the, uh, the IRS in the United States? So, uh, you know, obviously you're gonna have to go through these line by line and answer all of these. these it's just yes or no questions. And if it's yes, you have to fill in the uh, the details. There's, do you have a safe deposit? If yes, you gotta put that information in there, okay? All right, do you have any assets outside the, I, uh, the US? Do you have any funds being held in a trust or third party? You got to sign this thing and then you would have to check the boxes on everything you're including, right? Depending upon how, you know, if we earn a pay stub or if we own a business, right? We would have to put all of that in, but this is kind of like a checklist just to make sure we're not missing anything. Uh, you'll see down here, complete and sign form 656. So to do the offer, we start with the 433, we fill this out, you'll see we'll get that offer amount that we have here, and then we use this amount to fill out the 656, okay? Um, 656 will be in a separate video. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. As usual, like, share, or subscribe to the channel. I'll be continuing to put out more case studies where clients of mine have got offers accepted and or rejected just so we can learn how these things work, see if they apply to your situation. So be sure to subscribe to follow the channel. Thank you so much, guys.